Happy Palm Sunday. In my lifetime, this is the first time I will not be able to worship together in a church with our brothers and sisters. But I am confident in God this time is not going to stay for a long and maybe our next generation will not see this sort of situation again. Happy Palm Sunday. Hosanna, the son of David. We are living in a strange time when churches, airports, school, colleges, parliaments and most of institutions are closed. Buildings are being locked down. People are not allowed to go to the parks, cinemas and wherever a gathering is possible. They all are closed or locked down. Please, for our benefits, because we need to look after ourselves. We need to look after our safety and others. And that's one way we can do by exercising social distance from one another. We will be able to keep ourselves safe and others. But the church, buildings are also closed. Church doesn't mean just the building. Church means you and I, the body of Christ. We are not locked down. And on top of that, we have a gospel to share. And no one has the ability at all to lock down the gospel that God has put in our hearts through emails, through text messages, through online services, through live streaming, and by various other means, by ringing our friends and families, we are able to share that gospel. 2000 years ago, on this very day, when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, by leading a procession of people from all age backgrounds, they were children, there were young people, there were women, men, and a quite a significant huge crowd was with him. And they all were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Today, when we are not able to worship in our churches, but it doesn't mean that we are not able to pray together. Wherever we are, God is there. Wherever you meet, wherever we come together to worship the Lord, God is there. Our church buildings are very, very important for us. And that soon the time will come when we will be able to come together to meet in our churches. But until we are not able to do that, wherever we are, we will meet together by using the modern technology. Let's see what Marvin is bringing for us today. She is one of the lay readers in our ministry area. See what she is doing today for us, how she is leading service from her home, and how other people will be speaking to us by using these modern technologies. Let's see what Marvin is bringing for us today. Good morning and welcome. My name is Myron and I'm a lay reader at St Edmund's Church, Crick Howell. And it's my joy to welcome you to our family home this morning as we isolate together. Our preacher this morning is Dr Claire Amos, the author of Opening the Scriptures, Setting Our Hearts on Fire, which was our Lent study group material this year. She was due to be with us at St Ed's this weekend, speaking to us on Saturday evening and this morning. And we are grateful to her for working with us remotely 
to enable us to hear her reflections. It's been our custom on Palm Sunday to process through the streets of Krikawal, with singing triumphant songs of worship, waving banners as we approach the church. We also pray a blessing on the palm crosses before we start our journey. This morning, we have no donkey and no procession, but we can still sing and pray that God's kingdom will come here on earth. And if you have a palm cross or any other cross to hand, you may want to hold it up as we sing together. Our opening hymn this morning is Come People of the Risen King, a call to rejoice and worship God. However we may be feeling this morning, we can lift our eyes to him and be comforted and strengthened by his steady arms of mercy. has chosen this morning is Psalm 122, called a Psalm of Ascent, a psalm that worshippers would have sung as they went to Jerusalem to worship and sacrifice at the temple. Let's read these words together. The words will appear on the screen. 
I rejoiced with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is bound firmly together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord, according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. We come now to a time of confession. We take some, a moment of silence and we bring ourselves before God, knowing that we are sinful and knowing too that he will forgive our sins if we open our hearts to him. We pray together. Lord, Lord God, God, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you. you. We, we have, have done, done evil in your sight. We, we are sorry and repent. Have, have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our psalm this morning said, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be with you. Today, many of us are unable to greet each other face to face or make physical contact with a touch or a hug as we share God's peace together. Many of us too will be recognising the need for God's peace in our own lives today. But if you can see out of the window, face the world outside and let us pray for peace in our world as we say, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And now with thanksgiving in our hearts, we pray, let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord. And we shall praise your name. Let's spend some time giving God our own praise and thanksgivings. Philippians 2, verses 1 to 11, imitating Christ's humility. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. 
Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in, in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on the colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus at the temple. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove, and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It's good to be with you. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Life-Giving Spirit. Palm Sunday and pilgrimage belong together. As Jesus and his disciples enter Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday in this Gospel account, which we have just heard read, they were in effect coming as pilgrims to the city which has been the goal and longing of a multitude of pilgrims initially Jewish, more recently Jewish, Christian and Muslim. It's often been suggested that the crowds whom Jesus encountered as he crested the Mount of Olives and travelled down the hill towards the gates of the city, not there because they had come out of the city, especially to meet with Jesus, but because they too happened to be travelling to Jerusalem on pilgrimage as the Feast of Passover and Unleavened Bread approached, one of the great three, three great pilgrimage festivals of the Jewish religious calendar. I cherish the city of Jerusalem. I've done so for personal reasons since I was first fortunate enough to visit it at the age of 18. And I was then privileged to study and work there for five years in my twenties. I have visited it many times since. It was in Jerusalem that I first met Alan, my husband, so for that reason alone, apart from anything else, the city is especially dear to me. 
I've been privileged that both my initial professional role in Jerusalem, helping to run short courses for Christians from many parts of the world, and the biblical and theological work that I have been engaged in in more recent years, has required me to reflect on what Jerusalem should mean to me and others spiritually and theologically. The Mount of Olives is one of my favourite places in Jerusalem. It's very probable that the path down it that I and millions of others have taken over the centuries is very close to or identical with the route that Jesus would have trod during his own Jerusalem pilgrimage. It's certainly the path that each year on Palm Sunday is trodden joyfully by the many, many members of the Christian community of the Holy Land. This year, sadly, I suspect, that the pilgrimage procession that is due to play, take place today will, of course, not be happening. The picture, I hope, is now on your screens and was, was taken by Eduardo Fanfani, an ordinand of the Diocese of Europe. It's taken on the Mount of Olives, looking down towards the walled city of Jerusalem. The picture is dominated by the beautiful golden dome of the Dome of the Rock, now part of the Muslim sanctuary of the Haram al Sharif, the Noble Sanctuary, as it's called, for which 2,000 years ago, during the earthly ministry of Jesus, would have been the site of the temple the ultimate goal of Jesus and his fellow Jewish pilgrims. It would have looked equally magnificent then, though sadly, only 40 years later, it was to be destroyed when the Roman authorities savagely put down the Jewish revolt against their rule. Eduardo was participating in a pilgrimage that I was helping to lead. The picture is taken from the grounds of a beautiful small church that's called the Dominus Flavit, a Latin phrase which means the Lord wept, which commemorates the moment when Jesus weeps as he first catches sight of the city of Jerusalem, saying with great passion, if only you had known on this great day the things that make for peace. These words are noted in the Gospel of Luke, though they do not appear in the account of Matthew, which we have just heard read today. It was standing close to the place where Eduardo took the picture that I would have shared with the group a Jewish saying which has always spoken powerfully to me and which sums up for me the glory and the tragedy of Jerusalem. Ten portions of beauty gave God to humankind, nine to Jerusalem and one to the remainder. Ten portions of sorrow gave God to humankind, nine to Jerusalem and one to the remainder. The beauty and the sorrow of Jerusalem, the fact that though it is called and named to be a vision of peace, Yerushalayim, Shalom, it has so often throughout history been a theatre of war, are at the heart of what Jerusalem means to me. I love it, not because of its perfection, for it certainly isn't perfect, but precisely for its imperfection, the squabbles over ownership and control of holy places, whether those squabbles, squabbles are between different Christian groups, as in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, or between the different religions of Judaism, Christianity and Islam, demonstrates visibly the failings of humanity, and perhaps even my own. There is a sentence that sums up for me the ways in which these realities lead us from Palm Sunday towards the events of Good Friday, which we will be holding before our eyes as we tread through the days of the coming week. Jerusalem is the place where God is crucified by the desires and aspirations and passionately held beliefs of men. I once put it like this, Jerusalem is a sacrament of what it means to be human. By that I mean that Jerusalem shows up visibly and physically the best and the worst of the human condition. On the one hand, it is a visible symbol of our longing, of our highest and best desires, our love of beauty, 
and our desire to worship God. But it's also a powerful reminder of how this best can go so tragically wrong, precisely because we find it so difficult to love without also seeking to possess. Jerusalem is the place where this conundrum is squeezed into a sort of prism so that it can be viewed in sharp focus. And there is a mysterious way in which Jerusalem does not only unveil these realities about the human condition, but also challenge us to address them, to truly become the human beings God created us to be, in God's image and likeness, as God's partners in the creation and repairing of our world. It is, of course, interesting to be reflecting on pilgrimage to Jerusalem precisely at a time when that is one of the many things that we cannot do. When we think about a pilgrimage, the mental picture which probably springs to mind for most of us is the journey, quite a long journey. It will have its difficulties and dangers, but will have as its goal a place in the distance. And whenever, wherever we are in Europe at the moment, making such a journey is essentially prohibited to us. We are being told over and over again to stay at home, either as part of what the UK government has adopted as its mantra, or indeed as as a result of our own sense of self-preservation and community and willingness to support others. But perhaps that reality offers its opportunities for a different sort of pilgrimage. As we have been squeezed into this unlooked for stability, perhaps we can discover that in the coming days and weeks, we will have the opportunity to make a journey that leads us deeper into ourselves and into our relationship with God. George Herbert, that quintessential Anglican whose writings I love, in his great poem, Prayer, speaks of prayer as being a heart in pilgrimage. Perhaps this is the time when we are being given an opportunity to discover this. And in the words of another great Anglican poet, T.S. Eliot, we must be still and still moving into another intensity. And that the end of all our exploring is to arrive where we started from and to know the place for the first time. As some notes that were written to accompany that pilgrimage to Jerusalem on which Eduardo took the photograph put it, the pilgrim gains insights and discerns new truths about himself or herself. And that can be as true on these strange and difficult different pilgrimages of the present time as it is on any journey to Jerusalem. The prayer from the rule for a new brother, the simple rule of a Roman Catholic community of brothers and sisters, which I share with you in a moment, draws on the idiom of pilgrimage to sp speak pil powerfully about the pilgrimage of the heart. I have found myself using and repeating the word squeezed. It's the word I used of Jerusalem and how it squeezes the divine human relationship into a particular physical intensity. It's a word I also used of our current situation, how through being squeezed into the confinement of our homes, we find ourselves having the opportunity to journey more intensely with God. As today we begin the chronological pilgrimage which leads us on a journey through Holy Week, there is another sense of squeezing that I want to draw to your attention. For one way to understand the passion of Jesus Christ is that it is the moment then, first in Gethsemane and then as he hangs on the cross itself, that essential story of the Bible, of God's longing for love for and grief for humanity are squeezed into a moment of time and space. And as with an olive oil press, now through the person of Jesus, God's mercy and healing, 
of which olive oil is often a sacramental symbol, is released into the world. It's through the pressure, the squeezing, the crushing, the obedience, the offering of love, that Jesus will experience in these coming days, that he will be able to become a channel by which he will draw to himself all those diverse elements which reflect both the pain and the joy of our human relationship with God. Through him and his sacrifice, they will be transfigured into something rich and strange, so that we can meet them again as they flower on the other side of his resurrection. And now those words from A Rule for a New Brother. We are called to follow Jesus closely. With him, we will take the road up to Jerusalem, the city of suffering and glorification. With him, we will give everything that the kingdom may come. On this road, we are called to be least of all and not master, to carry other men's burdens and not lay our own on them, to give freedom instead of taking it, to grow poor in order to make others rich, to take the cross upon ourselves, thus bringing joy to others, to die in order that others may live. This is the mystery of the gospel. And there is no purpose in endless talk about it. We're going to proclaim our faith now in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So let's stand or sit as you wish and affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come now to our time of prayer, and we start with the collect for today, the collect for Palm Sunday, read first in Welsh and then in English. Let us pray. Ho shalliog a thragwyddol ddiw, a anfonais dy fab ein hiachawdwr iesu grist, wrth gariad tyner at yr hil ddynol, i gymryd ein cnawd, a gyddioddef angau ar y groes. Caniata i ni ddilyn dy e siampl, ei amynedd a'i ostyneiddrwydd, a bod hefyd yn gyfrannog o'i atgyfodiad. Drwy iesu grist ein harglwydd, sy'n fyw ac yn teyrnasu gyda thi yn undod yr ysbryd glan. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers today, the response to the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, is hear our prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son was received by the crowds in royal splendour, 
yet rode in humility on a donkey. Give wisdom and humility to those who are honoured as leaders in our world. Give them hearts which are willing to serve the people they lead, hearts which are full of compassion for the weak and the vulnerable. We pray especially for the homeless and the refugees who have nowhere to turn at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the obedience Jesus showed as he set his sights towards Jerusalem, knowing that he was doing your will and knowing that he would suffer. We give you thanks for those frontline workers who are putting themselves at risk, modelling the love and care you showed those who are vulnerable and sick. We pray for your protection on them all. Those in the medical profession, the emergency services, those who work with the utility companies, making sure that energy and water supplies continue. Those who enable us to receive letters and phone calls and communicate easily with each other. Those who keep us well supplied with food. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our okay. prayer. We pray, Lord, that you would bring healing to those who are suffering, whether in hospital or at home, those who have COVID-19 and those who have other ailments, whom we name before you now. And we pray especially at this time that you would comfort all those who are quarantined and separated from their loved ones in times of crisis. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son died committing his spirit into your hands. Lead from death to life those who have died. As we commit them to your hands, receive them into your everlasting kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. In this time of trial, Lord, we pray that we would make time to listen to your voice leading us on, that we would follow in your way. We pray, Lord, that you would calm the fears which each one of us has about this time of pandemic, and that you would speak to us and reassure us of your love and care for your world. In a moment of silence, we honour you with our praise and thanksgiving and commit ourselves and those we love to your unceasing care. We draw our prayers together with the words which Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us in our worship. We pray this week that you will remain safe and well in God's keeping. Remember to listen to the government's advice, wash your hands, keep the faith and pray for God's protection. We are currently planning a service to mark Good Friday as well as the Easter Sunday service. So please keep an eye on your messages and the social media for details of those services. After our final hymn, we will return to Rana for the blessing. Ride on, ride on in majesty is a traditional Palm Sunday hymn which recalls the palm leaves and garments which were strewn on the road before the Messiah as he arrived in Jerusalem. But it also looks forward to Jesus' last days on earth and challenges us to take up our cross 
and follow him through this coming Holy Week as we remember together Jesus' death and resurrection. Thank you very much, Marvin, Claire, James, and all those who were involved in the service. What a wonderful service you put together for us all, so that we are able to worship together. Let us say, grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Here in our ministry area, here in our churches, we have a vision for these days, how we can worship together. Still, we can be in touch without touching one another. Stay at home and do the little things to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>